Determining the sample size. Example 106, Nielsen Media Research wants to estimate the mean time that full-time college students spend watching TV each weekday. Find the sample size necessary to estimate that mean with a 15-minute margin of error. Assume that 96% confidence is desired and assume that the population standard deviation is 112.2 minutes. All right, so in this problem, it's very clear that we're finding the sample size. It says find the sample size necessary to estimate the mean, right? So we're going to write down that formula just so we have it. N equals to Z alpha divided by 2 sigma divided by the margin of error, and all of that will be squared. That's the formula that we use for the sample size for this problem when we're trying to estimate the population mean. All right, let's look at some of the other stuff they gave us in the problem. It says that we want a 15 minute margin of error. So we're given the fact that E is supposed to be 15 minutes, right? That's the margin of error. We're also told that the confidence level will be 96%, so 0.96. And then finally, they say the population standard deviation is 112.2 minutes. Notice that this is minutes. This should also be minutes because we want, when we divide them in the formula, to cancel out the units. So we need to make sure the units for these two items are the same. Okay, now that we know that, the only thing we're missing from the formula, we have E, we have sigma, but we don't have Z alpha divided by 2. We find that value by looking at the confidence level. So we're going to go to the Z table to find the Z alpha divided by 2 value in this case. A lot of times we use the T table because at the bottom of the T table there are some Z critical values, but those values are for confidence levels of 99, 98, 95, 90, and 80. We don't have 96% on the T table, so we're not going to be able to use the T table here. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to look up half of 9600. So let's do that first. If I take 0 0.96 and I divide it in half, I get the answer 0 0.4800. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look this up. So I'm going to say look this up on the Z table. All right, and I want to look it up on the Z table because that's going to lead us to Z alpha divided by 2. So let's go to our Z table and look that 4800 value up to see what our Z alpha divided by 2 value is in this case. Okay, so we're looking for 4800 in the body of the table here to see if we can find the corresponding Z score. So let's scroll down this first column visually and see if we can find something close to 4800. I don't see it quite yet, so I'm going to move the table up just a little bit. And let's see what we find now. So as I scroll down, I see values that are close to 4,800. Close, 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 close. There's 4,772. Here's 4,821. So maybe 4,800 is over in this row somewhere. I'll move over. I see 4,793, 4,798, and 4,803. So 4,798 is real close, only two ten thousandths away. 4,803 is three ten thousandths away. So we'll take this number, 4,798, which is the closest of the two values. And that's in the 2.0 row and the 0.05 column at the top. So the z-score is 2.05, 2.05. Okay, so we found out that our z-alpha divided by two value turns out to be 2.05. All right, so after looking up 4,800, that's how we produce this number. Okay, now once we have that, we're going to take all those values then, and we're going to plug them into our formula for n. So n is equal to that z alpha value we just found, 2.05, times the sigma. The sigma is 112.2. We don't need to put the minutes in there because we know they're going to cancel out anyways divided by the margin of error. Again, that's 15 minutes. No need to put the minutes. And then we're going to square that. Let's use our calculator to see what that gives us. So here's my calculator. I'm going to enter in these numbers then. So we have 2.05, and we're going to multiply that by 112.2. And then we're going to divide that by 15. So I don't need any fancy parentheses at this point. I just do all that. I divide it by 15. I get 15.334. But remember, we still need to square that, right? So we get the answer 15.334 inside the parentheses. But then we'll need to square it. So I'm going to take that answer. I'm going to square it. 
Now when I square it, I get 235.13, so on and so forth, right? So n is 235.13 dot dot dot. When we do a sample size calculation, this is the minimum sample size required to have this confidence level and this margin of error. If we want to have those and no less than that, then we need to always make sure that we don't undercut this in any way. So even rounding down here would be a bad idea. We don't want to say 235 people. So we're going to always round up in this instance. Just for this calculation of sample size, we're going to use the rule that we always round up and we're going to call this 236. So that will be the number that we choose. That's our minimum sample size to achieve these quality levels. Of course, the fact that we round it up here is going to mean we'll have slightly higher quality than that, but it's okay to have more quality than less. So rounding up is the way we'll go. We will not round down. Even though this normally rounds down, we're going to use 236. And that's the sample size answer for this question.